Today, I want to uh, show you how to create consistent characters uh, in mid-journey using reference images. Uh, and uh, so we're going to start out with uh, an image that I created in mid-journey, but you can use images as reference images that you've taken your own photographs or uh, any sort of image at all that you have uh, permissions to use. And, uh, but in this case, we're just using a mid journey image. Um, we're gonna start with this right here. And it's a woman with glasses and short red hair. And uh, the reason I picked that is because it will actually show up as we're doing different prompts. Uh, it will be a little bit more obvious certain things that are happening and I'll point them out to you. So I'm gonna keep the prompts kind of simple. I'm not gonna put a lot of descriptors in the prompts just because I want to, you to see how the different reference images I'm using uh, work to create an image and how they work to combine because there's a couple different types of reference images that we can create. So let me reduce that again and we're going to go up here to the prompt. I'm using the web version of Midjourney who everyone should have access to this now as well I may do a video on how to use the web interface as well now that it's available to everybody. Uh, but to start out with we're going to go here to where the little, the image prompt is at the top of the screen and we're going to click on this um, icon of a picture. You can see there are a bunch of pictures here. These are pictures that I've already used as reference images. If I want a new reference image I can drag it over an image over to here from the file system or I can click on this and it will bring up uh, show all files and I can actually click on here and bring up a file box and I can bring new pictures in. But we already have all of the pictures uh, I think that we're going to need for this demo al already pulled up into here. So this is the image that I just showed you uh, uh, full size of this woman and we're going to put it right here. And actually before we even do that, let's we can click and X that out and get rid of it. Let's, uh, let's do a quick prompt and let's do a prompt of a woman dancing uh, in the desert. So that's all our prompt is. Uh, very simple. And this is kind of almost give us a, a control uh, image. So with just that prompt, a woman dancing in the desert, we get some images like this. And um, the characters kind of look similar in here, but they're all really different. They're dressed different and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here and we're going to uh, drag, drag our image here, our reference image. And I'm going to click, there are three icons here. The first one is uh, to use the image as an image prompt. So it's kind of a, a reference for the entire image. The next one is a style, the little paper clip is a style reference. And that's if you want to, um, if you, if you want to uh, make it, it a similar style to a different image that you have. And this third one it, uh, with the icon of the kind of the silhouette of a person, if we click this, this is the character reference itself. So whatever character we put in the image will be based on this image. Now it's important to know that you can only use one currently you can only use one character reference at a time or at least easily or and reliably so if you put more than one reference of different people in or different images um you're going to end up with it's going to combine the people so like if you have two people and two characters and you put two images up here, it won't, it can't figure out which is which and how to do it. So it will combine the two. So you'll get two, two people that l look like they're the same person, but they're, com they're combined of the, the two images. So it will actually combine images. So you have to be careful of that, at least for now, as they're developing it. But it's something to keep in mind and always kind of experiment. And some of the stuff will change over time because it will get a little bit better and a little bit more specific. But anyway, we're going to use the same the same uh, prop, woman dancing in the desert, and we're going to use this as the uh, character reference. And I'm going to hit enter. So now you can see that all of these images now look like the character reference we have. The woman has short red hair and glasses and and the same face. Uh, or, or basically the same face. And uh, 
the reason I did short red hair, you'll, you'll see, um, we're going to make some modifications to this. So the first modification I'm going to make is, um, we're going to go back and we're going to bring in our character reference. You always have to remember to hit this little silhouette of the person icon so that it knows that it's the character reference. So then we're going to put back in our prompt, a woman dancing in the desert, and we're going to put in a uh, red coat. And then we're going to hit enter. Now you can see that it hasn't really put a red coat. It's almost like a red shirt. And you can see down here, she's dressed in this black dress, it looks like. Uh, because in the actual original uh, character reference, she's dressed in black. But because the reference we have doesn't show much clothing except this black right here. Mid Journey is just ex assuming she's dressed in kind of a black uh, dress or a black top. In fact, it gives her a red skirt down here. And if you had more of her outfit in the image, it would replicate it. So by default, it kind of replicates the entire character. So the fact that she has glasses, red hair, short red hair, and uh, how she's dressed, it will base um, the image on all of that. So it bases the entire character. But we want her in a red coat. And we're having problems because it's it will put a red coat kind of or this red sweater or something on here, but it's trying to keep the fact that she's dressed in black in there in 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 a particular style of uh, fabric and all that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the same thing in and we're going to go uh, uh, well actually let's use the exact same prompt here. So we're going to use this prompt again. All right, so we're going to set back up this prompt again, make sure it has a character reference right there, and then we're going to go uh, CW for character rate weight. Now, character weight will tell us tell it how much of the character reference to use. So if we go 100, it's a value between 0 and 100. 100 means use it all, including your clothing and everything. Uh, but if we go to 0, 0 basically means the face, so we can change everything from her body to the... To, to the way she's dressed and everything. So we're going to try it with a, a character weight of zero using the same reference image uh, and uh, with the uh, phrasing woman dancing in the desert in a red coat. And then we're going to hit enter. So now you can see she's dancing in the desert and she actually does have a red coat on. And uh, she is kind of still wearing a black dress and such. Um, but we could change that as well if we wanted to, uh, and we could change anything about her body. But you notice also, and this is one of the reasons I did short red hair, her hair is, uh, is looking a lot longer now because I guess at least currently, um, mid journey kind of considers the hair almost, uh, almost like clothing or something. Um, so when we put it to zero, it, it feels it has the freedom to change the length of her hair. Uh, so that's interesting the way as character weight from zero to 100 isn't really something that is a specific type of thing. So, um, it, it, it is set. So even on zero that it's going to keep the face and it, it actually keeps the glasses and such. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this again. Let's go back and get the uh, image here. Make sure that we click the little silhouette. And we're going to put a character weight of uh, 50, which is halfway in between uh, 0 and 100. So it should um, take our suggestion about the coat, but still keep her hair, hopefully. And so we're going to hit Enter. And there we go. And in fact, this one's pretty good right here. You can see she's now wearing a red coat. She has her short red hair and her glasses and everything. So we have the same character and she's wearing a red coat. Um, so that's an example there. You've obviously got to experiment with it because it depends on the images, your prompt. Probably when you're doing a prompt, you'll have more descriptions in it as well. And uh, experiment with the character weight depending on what you're doing. So when you do an image, try a couple different character weights. Remember 100 is the maximum. It's going to keep the character as close to whatever you gave it as possible. And zero is going to just keep the face, basically. Um, it's going to keep the hair to a certain extent as well, but the length might change or the style might change in the hair. Um, and apparently, because the glasses are on the face, it, it seems to keep those as well. So now we're going to... I'm going to show you some of the other ways to use these image references because there are different types as I went over. So we're going to go back here, this, and we're going to put her back in here and we're going to make her the character reference. Now, the next thing I'm going to do, let's take a look at this image right here. Here's an image and, and this could be a photograph as well or whatever image that you um, 
use. But I created this in Mid Journey too. And uh, this is a picture of New York City in the, uh, the 1950s. So I'm going to use this in this image. So we have it right here, and I'm going to drag it right here. And we're going to just leave it as the default, which is uh, use this as a prompt image. So this is kind of going to use this image as a reference. It's not going to put the image in exactly, but it's going to take elements from this image and put it in our final image. So I'm going to just put a very simple prompt, woman walking. So I'm not even going to reference... Um, I'm not even going to reference uh, anything about the uh, environment she's in or the back. And I'm going to hit enter. So now you can see um, she's in a, a city background and everything. And it looks like it didn't really keep the 19, at least in this one, it didn't keep the 1950s cars or anything. So uh, it looks like there are newer cars in here, but it's still New York City. Here it's a little bit hard to, harder to tell. So now what we're going to do um, another prompt here. And we're going to go and we're going to take her once again and make her our character reference. And we're going to take the city kind of background here and just leave that as the uh, image prompt reference. But then we're going to go and uh, pull in another file here. We're going to take this image right here. And what is this image of? This is an image of a woman in black and white, very high contrast. So we're going to use this and, and see what happens when we put this in. And we're going to go with style. And so this is going to reference the style of this image. And so we'll take certain attributes out of that as well. So if we uh, go back here and put woman walking again and hit enter, now you can you now you can see in here it's taken elements of the style into this um, from the other picture. It's higher contrast for one thing. It's more monochromatic. It does almost look black and white. It's still keeping her red hair though, uh, and there's some color in there. But you can see that there's a, a shift in that. Now, if we had have used something that was like an oil painting or a, a different style of uh, drawing or whatever, it would have added elements of that into here as well. So you can see there's three different types of, of uh, reference images that you can use. In any combination, you can use one or all three of them. And you can use a couple of each one. Sometimes people like to use a couple uh, of images. Um, like if we had uh, an image from the front and the side, that some people think that helps. Uh, others just use the one image. It does really well with just one image for like a character uh, or reference. So, uh, but you can experiment with using like two or three images as long as they're of the same person or whatever. Uh, like I said, one way to do it is to have a, f a front view and a side view, which, but it's pretty good at guessing. So if you have a front view or a good view of the person's face, that's the important thing. All right, so I'm gonna do another example and I'm gonna use a, a, a different image here. I'm gonna use this image of a robot, which I created in Mid Journey once again, and I told it to make it on a white background. And so I spent some time messing around to create this character of a robot. So we're going to do an image prompt. Uh, let's just make it robot in desert. So that's kind of our control image. So basically what we're doing, going to do is see what it comes up with without any reference image with this. So you can see it's come up with a couple of different robots here and a couple of different styles of robots. So let's go here and bring our robot into here. Make sure we hit once again the char make character reference icon there. And uh, we're going to go uh, robot in desert. Now let's look at our reference image once again. This is the reference image right here. Now it's not perfect with uh, like a robot or certain other characters because uh, it actually changes the head a little bit, but it's basically this the same style of robot. So it keeps it more consistent, but not as consistent as a person. Uh, more than likely in the future, they will uh, adjust that so that the character reference can even figure out, you know, that it's a robot or Maybe you're using an animal. I haven't really experimented with animals yet on that. But that's just to give you another idea that uh, you can use other things as character references. But if they're not a person, it may not it may not adjust it as closely because it's looking for certain things. And if they're not in the thing, now I might have created another robot that looked more like a human, and it may have uh, picked that up on on the facial features because the more similar to a human, whereas in this robot, um, 
the face is, uh, you know, it doesn't have a nose or, or mouth, really. Or it doesn't have a mouth. Yeah, it does have a little mouth there. Uh, and it actually keeps it in a couple of these things here. But it doesn't have a nose, for example. It doesn't have a regular human face. Uh, so that's, that's another thing you can experiment with. And you can experiment with using actual photographs on uh, as a reference image for, for the background or for the folk foreground. Uh, in fact, what we'll do is we'll do one more. We'll go here. We'll take our original character reference again. And uh, this is an image I photographed right here, here uh, of a building. And we're going to use that as kind of the reference background image. And uh, I just put woman dancing again. See, now the image that I took is um, of a building, uh, an abandoned building with some trees and stuff around it. So let's put like an abandoned building behind her. It's not exactly the same building that I was using, but it's the same sort of thing. So so it uses it as a reference for what the background would, would be like or a similar environment in the background. So those are some of the things you can do with image references in cre creating a consistent character.